Well, we're on the putting green today and we're going to talk about the putting yips. Now, thankfully, this only afflicts a certain percentage of golfers. However, anyone that suffered from the putting yips will agree with me in saying that it's one of the most soul-destroying things that any golfer can go through. If you're missing a lot of putts because of the putting yips, then you're gonna stand over a lot of these short putts and actually believe that you're gonna miss. So the putting yips has been defined as a loss of fine motor control skills with involuntary movement. And that's not entirely true. See, the putting yips is partly neurological and partly psychological. But there's definitely a self-sabotage going on there, especially if someone says, well, I have the yips, I've got the putting yips, and that's only gonna exaggerate the issue and then we start to believe that we've got the putting yips and we can actually get into that mindset of waiting for it and even causing it. So the neurological part of it, nerve damage if you like, those messages between your hands and your brain get a little bit damaged through continued misses of short putts and then that can exaggerate the issue where the player actually starts to believe that it's gonna happen. But the psychological aspect, that's more of a performance anxiety and that's why we see it mostly on short putts where the player expects to hold these putts and they feel like they should and they put more pressure under themselves and that's when those putting yips can really start to manifest themselves more. So here's an example, our case study with the yip. We can see there that it's quite a sharp movement, but you see how it happens at impact. So we're definitely gonna see if we can get this player to focus on other aspects of the putting stroke, not just what's happening at impact. So first up, we wanted to get an idea of which hand was at fault here, which hand was causing this yip to happen. So we got the player to hit some putts just with the left hand and just with the right hand. The left hand no, had no issue in that it was a very smooth stroke. Okay, not full control because it's just one-handed, but definitely no yipping going on there. But we take the left hand away and put the right hand, so the bottom hand for this player, the right-handed golfer, and we can see that this is when the yip is really bad. The right hand is taking full control and that's where that involuntary spasm is happening. So that's the true putting yip there. I think the first port of call for a lot of golfers that have the yips, and if they identify that it's the bottom hand, the right hand that's causing it, then I suggest you start with a cross hand grip. Starting with a cross hand grip so that the bottom hand is now the left hand, and that might be able to get that player more in control of the putting action, and get you, if you're suffering from the putting yips, a different hold on the putter grip and being able to almost pull through that putting stroke with that left hand. So we're just changing things up a little bit, but also getting the, the left hand for a right-hander to have more control over the stroke. We're really interested in the fact that it's at impact that it happens, always at impact, this involuntary movement, this spasm. So what I want you to do, if you're, in fact, any putter, any golfer out there is going to benefit from this. I want you to focus more on your finish position rather than impact. And that's where all the focus is for a lot of putters. They're focusing on what's happening impact. They're watching the ball. And if they're not getting through that ball properly, then we're going to see differences in speed and differences in line because we're getting ball bound. We're focusing very much on what the putter is doing at impact and we're even trying to square it up at impact. And there's so much focus on the putter face and our hands and the ball, everything at impact. But what I generally see with a lot of golfers is that there's no set finish position. It changes the follow through length. It, sometimes it comes over here, sometimes around here. Sometimes the putter really closes a lot. Sometimes it doesn't. There's a lot of inconsistency with that finish position, the follow through, but also there's no stable finish position. If you watch a lot of the top putters on tour, Jordan Spieth's a great example, Jason Day, another one, Tiger Woods, they hold that finish position for a couple of seconds. They're committing to the putt. This is really important from a mental aspect is now they're not worrying about what's happening impact. They're focusing very much on that finish position. And for most good putters, that follow through is the same length as the backswing. But let's have a go cross hand and hold the finish. There we go, that stability is really gonna stand you in good stead for a smoother stroke, for more consistency with your speed control and your putting line. So let's get back to our case study, what did we do? Well, I suggested for this player, quite a tall player, that a very short putter is a good idea because that can help that player 
bend over a little bit more and get more of a pendulum action and start to activate some bigger muscles in that pendulum action. With, uh, with any player that stands a little bit taller, it's very easy to get handsy through the putting stroke. So this has really helped this player. And what he found on his own was going the opposite to what a lot of instruction suggests, which is a light grip. He found that that made the putting yips more prevalent. So we've gone with a much tighter grip than would be normal. And this has really helped this player to uh, reduce the in incidences of putting yips. In fact, almost to the point where it's, it's pretty much gone. He decided not to go with the cross hand grip at this stage, although it's still something that he's experimenting with. But you can see here that he's producing a much smoother stroke now, much smoother action, and he's holding a lot more putts. And of course, he's very happy with the progress that he's making in that he has a lot more control over the putter face and his speed control just by going through those three processes. And step four, and probably the most important, is self-talk. Watch what you say to yourself. Don't ever say to yourself, I've got the putting yips. The more times you say it, remember you are listening to yourself, the more times you say it, the more chance you have of yipping a putt and the longer you're gonna suffer from this affliction. So say things to yourself like, I love putting, I'm improving my putting, I'm focusing on the process and I'm getting better all the time.